report from Mission Central London, and I want to share with you this evening the reliable promises of Elohim for his remnant during the storms of life like the coronavirus and today's lesson six. And before we begin the lesson, I just want to take you through a few reliable data. You know, one of the most reliable data points in the world is called the, I mean, his website called worldofmeters.info. The crunch numbers by the day, by the hour. Even what I'm about to share with you is about one hour late. But it gives you a baseline because from all over the world, they take data, fed it into the system, and they can present to you in real time statistics. For instance, population of the world, 7.74 million, billion, and then 282,000 beds per day. You get that as it progresses. How many people added? How many people have died? You get that. Now, there's something important I want to share with you about what we are praying for, the coronavirus inspection, infections. As of today, it had risen from yesterday. There are 752,687 from 680,000. So, number of people infected under a million, about a quarter of a million, 752,687. But I want you to listen to this. Out of that number affected, how many have died so far? That's 6,226. And that is 19% of those infected have died. So what happened to the other 81%? What happened to 100 and 58,700 people. What happened to them? Then those who have already recovered, who are already healed in, in spiritual language, 81% of the people recovered, healed. Men and brethren, what you can see is this. Vaccine has not been developed, as I shared the other time. Cure has not been developed. Vaccine is still many months away. Cure is many months away. They've not even started animal testing. Now, in the absence of the vaccines or drugs to cure people, the only logical explanation for why there is a relatively low mortality rate in something that is supposed to be one of the worst pandemics in the world, the high survival rate is attributable to divine intervention by Elohim out of his mercy seat and out of his compassion we do not fail, and in response to the fervent, effectual prayer of the righteous saints worldwide. Different networks, several networks are praying. Several ministries are mobilized and they are praying. And including in the Global Prayer Task Force to degrade and eliminate coronavirus on Facebook, over, there are over 532 members already. And a lot who are waiting in the process of admission, which means that in the next two weeks, we could have about a thousand people in that group praying. And those on, on the uh, conference call line, every hour of the day, every minute, every second, people are in the line praying since it was started. Brothers and sisters, it can only be the Lord whose hand has been stretched out in mercy to the people of the world. I want to tell you something about Elohim. It's not like we humans. Elohim allows his rain to come upon the just and the unjust. His sun to shine upon all. Even as his mercy is happening, there are those who don't know him who he has shown mercy on. But one thing we know is that the Lord is a merciful Elohim. And he has asked us, he invited us, he call upon me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things. And so what we are doing in this series in the evenings, Reliable Promise of Elohim, is to mobilize people to rise up in faith, rise up in prayer, and refuse to come down, hands on the plow, remain, continue, until this coronavirus is totally degraded and is eliminated from the face of the earth. And it's doable. It's doable as we recognize the chief instigator, Satan. And... The demons he assigns, like the demon of fear, 
to cripple people, to weaken the immune system so that it can help have people cheat and all kinds of things. The amount of lies, you know, that spawn lies, all kinds of conspiracy theories and people are being misdirected, people are losing it. Brothers and sisters, let us continue to travel in prayer. Let's continue to labor in the arena of prayer and spiritual warfare. Our labors are not in vain in the Lord. When we go into eternity, we'll probably get to know how many people the Lord used our collective assignment as intercessors to save. So today we continue to look at, you know, the reliable promises of the Father and principles that have been laid hold of before. And the book of Psalms we started last, uh, in the last broadcast on Saturday, today we still go back to Psalms. And you say, why Psalms? Psalms is a book in which we saw David, who wrote most of the Psalms, this man was a man of war. This was a man who knew that his strength was in Elohim alone. He learned to rely on Elohim from a young age, from a teenager. He was able to slay bear, slay lions, because of his trust in Elohim. In the same way, he was able to slay Goliath as a young man, because of his trust in Elohim. He was able to take the armies of Israel out and bring them in because of his trust in Elohim. And in the years he reigned, 40 years and 30 years respectively, these were over Israel and over Judah, it was his reliance on the Lord. When he was pressed against the wall, it was Elohim. So some of the Psalms are prayers he prayed to Elohim. Some of them are revelation. Some of them are inspired. Some of them represents the anguish of a man trusting the Lord. So whichever it is, I want to say something to you based on the principle we established about Elohim dealing with his remnant in the earth rim. Remember the case of Noah, who with his family of eight, they were delivered from the flood. Remember the case of Lot, who with his family delivered before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. Even so, the Lord says to his remnant in every generation, we can go and check up Elohim's dealings with his people of old. And based on that, we can rely. Okay. What he did before, he can do much more now. Now let's start with Psalm 91. A very important psalm of divine protection. Look at what the psalm says. He that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And brothers and sisters, there's no sweeter thing to say at this time. You see, the, the people of the world have asked people to be self-quarantined or self-isolated and they've shut down. I just received a message today, you know, confirming what we have received over the weekend. And the message was, Owere is now in lockdown. That's our Jerusalem, in lockdown. We're told you can't move outside the state. And then within the state, you can only move within the village. You can hardly go to the capital city of, of, of any of the state capitals. And some areas, it is total. So if it could happen there, we've been praying. I want you to pray that using Nigeria as a point of contact, the people whose healthcare system is not as organized as in the Western world, they will be spared this plague. They will be spared this pestilence. So he that dwelt in the secret place of the Most High shall abide on the shadow of the Almighty. The ultimate place of security is his presence. The ultimate place of security is to abide in the secret place of the Most High. If you abide there, the truth is that the danger will overpass. So don't regard isolation or social distancing as an evil thing. It's a time to really go back in. It's a time to allow ourselves to kind of be content with the presence of the Lord, not fret that we're not able to go out to go and have your popular Starbucks or Costa Coffee, not able to go to your favorite restaurant to eat your favorite meal. Let's try to enjoy the presence of the Lord. Verse 2, I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, in whom will I trust. This is powerful. May we be able to say that also, that he is our refuge, he is our fortress. In him we trust. Verse 3, surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. There can be no noisome pestilence in this generation greater than this pandemic. There have been worse pandemics. There have been Ebola. There has been all kinds of issues. They have happened. But nothing has struck the world with fear as this one. 
Nothing has shut down cities from the mighty Western nations with all their development and all their prowess in Medicare, healthcare, to the poorer nations, 199 nations infected from November to um, March, a period of four months, November 17th to now, four months and a few weeks, 199 nations. There are about 225 nations in the United Nations system. So you can imagine the speed. You can see this demonic force propelling this thing. The Lord says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler. Every trap the enemy has laid for you, you'll be delivered. And from the noise and pestilence, he shall cover thee with his feathers. And under his wings shall thou trust. He shall be thy shield and thy buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. Does this not describe COVID-19? What is read in verse 4 describes COVID-19. The circumstance, they say, shall cover us. With his feathers. Verse 5. Thou shalt not be afraid by me. So let me come again. Verse uh, 7 rather. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But they shall not come near thee. Only with the eyes thou shalt behold. And see the reward of the wicked. So at a time that is not a time to allow yourself to move. Listen. You should know your constitution. If your constitution is such that. When you hear news about mortality or morbidity or what's going on, you are afraid, you are fearful, tune off. Tune off news. But if you have the grace, as the Lord has given this vessel grace, to take the numbers and take them and put them upon, against the word of the Lord and know that the word of the Lord is greater and I better trust the word of the Lord than that, so that you are not ignorant and among any unit of believers, there should be somebody with that grace. Because otherwise, a lot of people can operate in darkness and go into problem. Men and brethren, it doesn't matter how many people they say is struck in your local council area, in your city, in your community. The Bible says it shall not come near you. And if you believe the report of the Lord, you can stand upon that word. It will not come near you. Verse 9, thou, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling place. This is a plague. He said, it will not come near your dwelling place. You know, we're told, you know, by somebody captured, you know, a CCTV apparently or whatever. You know, they captured some people who went to, uh, as delivery people, and then they will, they will, they will, they will put on some uh, effusions from their tongue, either a spittle or whatever, and they use their hand and they hold the doorbell, they rub it all over, maybe to cause infection to people unawares and all manner of things people are doing. That's why they say today, they say, if you are self isolation is not enough. If a post comes, like today I got a package of taka. Okay, what did I do? I took a big tissue and held it at the tip to bring it in, put it in a plastic. It's still there. We're going to spray the external packet because you don't know who handled the mail. The mail that came from outside the country, you don't know who handled it from the mail handlers. So basic precautions you can take. And the Lord says, he will not allow evil to befall thee, neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. That is the word of the Lord. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. This was what Satan tried to quote at Yeshua. But it is true that the Lord has given his angels charge over us. Verse 12, they shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on their feet. You know, what is that demonic force that is against you? Projected, declared, the Bible says you shall trample them on their feet. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him up on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I'll be with him in trouble. I'll deliver him and honor him. 
with long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. This is the word of Lord for you. I want to say this to you. Our days are numbered. The day the Father proposed to create you, he had also proposed how long you will live on planet Earth as his assign, as his ambassador. How long it will take him to fulfill what he wants to fulfill in the earth trip. Listen to this. No native doctor, no enchanter, no occultist, no witch, no wizard, no necromancer, no one who is yoked to hell shall be able to cut down your life by even one day. No COVID-19 or any other device for that matter has the capacity to cut down your life by one day. Yeshua came to die as exchange to give you life. If he redeemed you, then you can stand upon that redemption to know that of the truth. The Lord says, with long life, he will satisfy you and show you and show you his salvation. Then in Psalm 120, now from 120, from uh, 120, we we'll begin to see a number of promises in those Psalms that are powerful. 120 says, in my distress, I cried unto the Lord. What happened? He had me. Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. Who, what shall be given unto thee? Or what shall be done unto thee? Thou false tongues. He asks a question. Sharp arrows of the mighty with coals of juniper. Woe is me that I sojourn in Mish, and I dwell in the tents of Kedah. My soul had long dwelt with him that hated peace. I am for peace. But when I speak, they are for war. You know, the enemy may seem to have stirred up his, all his devices. Let me tell you this. Satan, the Bible calls him the adversary. He comes to steal, to kill, to destroy. He could come hauling these things at you, having tried other things. But the Lord says in your distress, call upon him. Elohim will hear you. He will deliver your soul from everything that has come against you. Then Psalm 121, I will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. That is a fact. You need to know that it's not about David only. That's why the most terrible people, the most fearsome people, the most insecure Christians are those who refuse to make Elohim their God. They refuse to make him their father. Because they want to be grandchildren of Elohim. They know the human daddy, the human mommy. Even now, in the midst of this, some people are waiting for their great man of God to pass the creed before they can know. Oh no. Elohim has no grandchildren. Every one of us is redeemed by the blood, including my children. Each of them has independent access to Elohim. And brothers and sisters, it's time to tear down that daddyism, that mommyism, that deadly thing that people do to the extent that they lose confidence of access to Elohim. Are we not going to have mentors? We'll have. Are we going to have spiritual uh, people who parent us into the Lord? Of course we'll have. But it should never be a screen covering someone to the extent that a Christian loses his confidence and ability to approach Elohim as your own father. Men and brethren, we will come to the place we lift up to our eyes to the hills from whence cometh from our help. Our help cometh from the Father. It comes from the Lord which made heaven and earth. It doesn't come from man of God. It doesn't come from woman of God. It doesn't come from overseer. It doesn't come from pastor. No, those that sell you oil, where are they? Those that sell you handkerchief, anointed handkerchief, pay a premium price. They buy a handkerchief for $1 in the store and they ask you to send them a gift of $50. They mail it to you and they, wow, what kind of thing is this? People bring in magic into the church and the Lord is not impressed. Your help comes from the Lord, the one who made heaven and earth. Verse 3, he will not suffer your foot to be moved. He that keepeth you will not slumber. Ah, we are told that during the war, there was so much trouble in Israel. An elderly woman refused to, when they sound the alarm, the air, the siren, to show that enemy fire was coming, people will run to their bunker, she will not run. So one day they came to ask her, why are you not running? He said, well, the word says that he who keeps me 
does not slumber or sleep. So I should just rest in him. Even though that was an extreme case, you need to come to that place where you know that he who keeps you, he who bore you, he who redeemed you, he who gave you a mandate on what he wants to accomplish to you, he doesn't sleep, he doesn't slumber. He's an Elohim that is there. The Lord, verse 5, is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The sun will not allow anything that is carrying diseases to get you. That's why at this time, you got to call for the good sun. Call for the sun that releases vitamin D. Call for the sun which will release the heat that will make it difficult for the virus to operate. And these things are tiny. As I told you yesterday, in the broadcast yesterday, that 500 million viruses that cause the common cold or flu, 500 million cannot fit onto the tip. They can fit into the tip of a pin. That's how tiny they are. And so, men and brethren, the Father has double layer protection for you. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Whenever it's time for you to go and get fresh supplies in the shop or to go to the bank or whatever that is needful and is allowed in your local jurisdiction, go with the confidence that the Lord is with you. But don't go out except it's for necessity. Don't go out except in all honesty is for necessity, and meanwhile, just be in the shadow of the Elohim, and he'll keep you. Psalm 122, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built as a city that is compact together, where do, whither the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord, unto the testimony of Israel, to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. For there are set thrones of judgment, the thrones of the house of David, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Peace be within thy walls and prosperity within thy palaces. For my brethren and companions' sake, I will now say, Peace be within thee. Because of the house of the Lord, our Elohim, I will seek thy good. Now, there are two interpretations of this. The first is the actual Jerusalem. Jerusalem is the city of the great king. That's a city Elohim chose to be the capital of the world. From there, Yeshua will rule the whole world as the great potentate. So he said, pray for the peace of it. It's where the throne of judgment will be. Men and brethren, I'm not talking about the judgment at the last day. I'm talking about where he will sit to rule the world. Pray for Jerusalem. That's where the Feast of Tabernacles will be continuous. Pray for Jerusalem, where the nations of the earth will come during the millennial reign. They will come to bring their wealth and their resources to worship the king, pray for that Jerusalem. Because you know what? The world has been coming against this city. It's been a tough body and same stone because of its manifest destiny. So pray for the peace of it. And I mean those political prayers that people are doing, these prayers that have to do with political groupings. I'm talking about praying for the city as the city of the great king. Then the second implication is wherever you are is your Jerusalem. Right now, London is at Jerusalem. Wherever you are, wherever the Lord has planted you, is your Jerusalem. Pray for the peace of it. That's why the Lord says, pray for your leaders. As you hear that our Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson, you know, tested positive. His aide Dominic Cummings, his right hand man, tested positive. His health secretary, Man Hancock, also tested, tested positive. That Prince Charles, the second in line to the throne, tested positive. What do you do? We pray for them by name. We ask the Lord to heal them, to make them strong, to be able to do what they ought to do. You pray for your president anywhere you are. This is not a time to play politics. Pray for your president, lift up holy hands, because he says if you pray for them, they'll be able to do right, and you live a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness. But when you don't pray for them, and all this criticism, so also, as they miss the mark, you'll be affected. And so, men and brethren, it's so important that we remember Psalm 122, pray for Jerusalem, the, the present capital of Israel, and pray for the Jerusalem where the Lord has planted you. Don't be like an alien. Don't perch. Dwell where the Lord plants you. Dwell 
Love it, pray for it, pray for the leaders, pray for the land, and you'll be the watchman over the place. Then Psalm 123, unto thee, o Lord, unto thee I lift up my eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Behold, as the eyes of the servant look unto the hand of their masters, and as the eyes of a maiden unto the hand of her mistress, so our eyes wait upon our Elohim until that he have mercy on us. This is where we are. We continue to pray. Pray for his mercy. Pray for his compassion. And we do not stop. We continue. We do that consistently, repeatedly. We do that, oh, persistently. Have mercy upon us, verse 3. Oh, Lord, have mercy upon us. For we exceedingly feel with contempt. Our soul is exceedingly filled with the scorning of those that are at ease and with the contempt of the proud. Yeah, we need to pray. We need to travel. We don't just pray for ourselves. We pray for our city. We carry the burden of our city. Carry the burden of our nation. Carry the burden of the earth dream. As responsible sons of Elohim, we are traveling. We are confessing the sins of the land. All the defilement, all the pollution, all the casting in the street of Elohim. All those things that people of the world have done and taken the way of, you know, uh, 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 um, what do you call it? The way of apostasy. We bring it before the Lord. We stand in the gap. Men and brethren, Psalm 124 says, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, Men and brethren, may now Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us. We can also say, when the COVID-19 rose up against us, if it were not the Lord that was on our side, then they had swallowed us up quick. When their wrath was kindled against us, and the waters had overwhelmed us, the stream had gone over our soul, then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Elohim, Blessed be the Lord who had not given us as a prey to their teeth. Blessed be the Lord who has not given us as a prey. Can I tell you, brother? Can I tell you, sister? Elohim has not given you as a prey to COVID-19. Even those who have been tested positive, he has not given you a prey. Men and brethren, let's stop allowing fake news to govern our behavior that even you are infected is not a death sentence. You saw the statistics I gave that 19% only of those infected are those who died. Men and brethren, the Lord is doing a great thing. The Lord is doing a great thing. He is doing a great thing. Men and brethren, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we escaped. I want you to believe that the snare is broken. The speed that with this COVID-19, the virus carrying it was propelling, coronavirus was moving at speed of light like Satan, their chief master. And the saints began to pray and began to travel. And I tell you, we're going to hear some good news. You've got to believe the report of the Lord. Don't allow yourself to be locked into what so-so and so expert said. What is the Lord saying by his spirit? Let's hear it. Hell, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 125, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abide forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about the people from henceforth now, even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the uh, lot of the righteous. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon your lot. Let the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in the heart. As for such as turn aside from their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity, but peace shall be upon Israel. This, there are things to claim in this Psalm 125. Then Psalm 126 now tells us something we can rejoice in by faith. And listen to this, when you pray and pray, there comes the time, assurance comes into your heart. When that assurance comes, thanksgiving should burst forth, praise should burst forth, worship should burst forth. And look at what the song we are going to sing in greater dimension. You are going to hear this across Africa, you are going to hear it across Europe, across North America, across the Caribbean, across the nations, across Asia. We are going to see this, new, this sound go forth. Psalm 126, when the Lord turned again, the captivity of Zion, were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. 
Then said they among the hidden, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord had done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears, the tears of prayer, the tears of traveling, the tears of intercession, the tears of bearing burden, even with groanings that cannot be uttered as Holy Spirit comes, our spirit man inside out, calling upon the Lord, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. They will procure the answers to what they prayed for. He that goeth forth and weeping, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Prayer will procure results. P P R. Prayer will procure results or a harvest. There is Psalm 139. Many a time they have afflicted me from my youth. May Israel now say, Many a time have they afflicted me from my youth, yet have they not prevailed against me. COVID will not prevail against you. And not just COVID-19. Satan is, you know, we are not mindful of his devices. You know, as people are now in isolation, in social distancing, a lot of people may be tempted to begin to eat and eat and eat and eat and eat or be tempted to be listless and be unable to adjust and other types of diseases can come up. Now we know that they may come against us. You know what? But they will not prevail. The plowers plowed upon my back. They made long their furrows. The Lord is torn. The Lord is righteous. He has cut asunder the cords of the wicked. Every cord of the wicked that was cast upon you is cut off. Let them that be confounded and turn back that hate Zion. Let them be as the grass upon the housetops, which wither up before it grow it up. Where wither the mower filleth not his hand, nor he that bindeth sheep his bosom. Neither they that which say the blessing of the Lord be upon you will bless you in the name of the Lord. That shall be your story. You will bless each other in the name of the Lord. Psalm 130, out of the depths have I cried unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Lord, let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, Lord, shouldest mark iniquity, O Lord, who shall stand? This is true. If the Lord were to check every single thing that people have done, believers, spirit-filled believers, people have done in different ways, some tiny, some medium, some large, if the Lord was marking them and putting them in a cupboard, who shall stand? But there's forgiveness with thee. That thou mayest be feared. There's forgiveness with him. That's why we need to not be presumptuous when we go before the Lord, ask the Lord, check us. What is it in me that you need to break? What new thing do you need to root out so that it can be pure within and without? He says, I wait for the Lord. My soul don't wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waited for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say, more than they that watch for the morning, that's we wait for the Lord. Let Israel hope in the Lord. For the, with the Lord there is mercy. With him is precious redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from his iniquities. Men and brethren, the mercy of the Lord is still flowing. The blood is still flowing. All we need is to take a plunge into the pool of the blood for cleansing day by day. So he who is waiting for the Lord, he purifies himself even as he's pure. And the Lord wants us to know that he is still the Elohim of mercy. Psalm 134, behold, bless ye the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, and which stand by night, stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary. Bless the Lord. The Lord that made heaven and earth bless the heart of Zion. We're going to sing this song. I want to tell you, brethren, we're going to rejoice. We're going to have a day of thanksgiving. We're going to designate an hour. Everybody's going to raise his hand and shout hallelujah seven times across the world. At a certain moment, we're going to glorify the Lord because this thing shall come to pass. Coronavirus is not unto death. It's not unto destruction. There are those who have doubted, is this the end? No, this is not the end itself. It's one of the process leading to the end. I've told you, it's like the end is going to be like, it's not going to be like this. And that's why people miss it. The end is going to be like a plane coming down, coming down, coming down. This issue now, this pandemic is one of the largest drop. And anybody the Father does not rescue with this crisis may have missed it permanently. 
And this is going to be a plan. The, the mercy of the Lord is stretched out. Brothers and sisters, we are going to rejoice. We are going to thank the Lord. Men and brethren, we're going to also sing the song of Psalm 135, praising the Lord, praising the name of the Lord, praising you, servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of the Lord, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good, and praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord had chosen Jacob, put your name there, unto himself, and Israel, put your family name together for his peculiar treasure, just as he chose Israel and Jacob, for I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all gods. Whatsoever the Lord pleased, that did he in heaven and in earth, and in the seas and in all deep places. It's not the purpose of Satan that will stand. It's the purpose of Elohim. It's the purpose of Elohim that stands a man and brethren. I want to encourage you to come to that place where you know that you know that by the grace of the Lord, you stand on the truth of the Lord. We're told in verse 6, Whatsoever the Lord pleases that he did in heaven and in earth, in the seas and all deep places, he caused the vapors to ascend unto the ends of the earth. He maketh lightnings for the rain. He bringeth the wind out of his treasuries. Who smote the firstborn of Egypt, but of man of beast? Whose end tokens of wonders into the midst of thee, O Egypt, upon Pharaoh, Pharaoh upon all his servants? Who smote great nations and slew mighty kings? Shiloh, king of the Amorites, and all king of Bashan, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and gave their land for an heritage, and heritage unto Israel his people. Thy name, O Lord, endure it forever, and thy memorial, O Lord, throughout all generations. For the Lord will judge his people, and he will repent him concerning his servants, the idols of the hidden, and silver and gold, the work of men's hand. They have mouths, but they can they speak not. They have eyes. But they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Neither is there any breath in their nostrils. They that make them are like unto them. For so is everyone that trusted in them. Bless the Lord, O house of Israel. O house of Aaron. O house of Aaron. Bless the Lord, O house of Levi. Ye that get out of Zion, we dwelleth in Jerusalem. Praise ye the Lord. Men and brethren, these are some of the things we're going to sing unto the Lord. We are going to worship the Lord. We are going to glorify him because the Lord is truly merciful. And that's why I want to encourage you before we close. The Global Prayer Task Force on Degradation and Elimination of Coronavirus was activated by midnight on Tuesday. Now, you know what? Every minute, every hour, every second, some remnant are standing in the gap. And you can join them. Take your time. Whether it's one hour dedicated, praise the Lord. If you can make only 30 minutes, praise the Lord. And if you cannot make it, take the prayer points. Pray wherever you are. The Lord wants to build up and he wants to teach our fingers to war. He wants to build us up. By the time this pandemic is over, Satan will regret he ever instigated it because the church that was dead, the church that was dormant, the church that was laity, are going to rise up, the Omega Church of Sons of Elohim, rise up, each of them having relationship with the Father, and when they meet together, iron sharpens iron, sparks fly, because the activated Omega Church is right here. The church that has no limitation, where brethren can interact, support one another, encourage one another, and we're not going to have local assemblies, we're going to have congregations, we're also going to have house fellowships, we're going to have activated individual brethren. And we need to pray these things in because the Lord, he doesn't allow it to happen for nothing. This crisis will bring the church to rims of perfection nothing else could achieve. And that is one of the things the Lord wants to see. And this shaking that is upon the earth is going to make people to create a window of opportunity. Say, wait a minute, our governments are not able. Our scientists are not able. Medical science cannot help. And they'll be open to look up to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out upon the earth rim like never before. I want to say this to you. The church still has a role. One of the roles of the church that is not yet fulfilled is to hinder the manifestation of the Antichrist. He's on earth right now. I believe, based on the word of Elohim, the Satan imitates everything Elohim does. Elohim allow Yeshua to be incarnated in the earth rim. He spent 30 years until the day he went for the baptism of John. The father affirmed him 
Holy Spirit came upon him, and from that day he began his public ministry. So the Antichrist will be will be on earth. Nobody will know. Even those around him will not know until the day that the church is taken away. He who lets will let until he's taken out of the way. Then with the chaos in the world, and let me tell you, this pandemic is also a dress rehearsal for the kind of things that will state to the world to look for a Messiah that is not Yeshua HaMashiach. They will look for a strong man, a powerful man, a man who can put the chaos together. So as he who is let is taken out of the way, then shall the man of sin be revealed, be unveiled, and the evil triunity, the triune evil, Satan imitating the Father, then the Antichrist imitating ye Jesus, Yeshua, and the false prophet imitating Holy Spirit, the three of them will manifest in the air trim. The great tribulation will be a time of trouble. And brothers and sisters, I want to say this to you. This is a time to make our way right with the Lord. This is a time to receive victory over sin and over anything that will prevent us from making it. The Lord loves you and he says, come unto me. Come. Hide. Let me hide you. Let me process you. Let me purify you. Let me make you ready for that day of days. And brothers and sisters, we love you dearly. And we're going to continue tomorrow. We're going to go all the way. Promises of protection, of preservation, prayers of protection and preservation, of security, all the way to the book of Revelation. The Lord is going to be picking them out for us. We may not cover all, but those that are relevant, as you receive them, Take them, show them, meditate on them, watch the video a number of times. Distribute to friends and family. Distribute to them. Build up yourself in faith because the, the span of time from the end of this pandemic to the return of the Lord, I mean to the uh, rapture, is going to be a very short span of time. We don't know shortness. It could be five years, it could be one year, it could be 10 years or 100 years. Listen, it will be short. And the Lord says, if you miss the Lord now, you will have missed something extraordinary. Brothers and sisters, we love you dearly. And his love compels us as leaders to share these things with you. Have a blessed night. Bye-bye. Till tomorrow morning when we do the master class orientation. Elect, thank you so much.